So hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's time to do another tier listing, ranking, I never know what to call them. Tier making list rank thing. And this one is going to be about the villains. Because there's been a lot. Actually, in Walking Dead terms, there hasn't really been that many. If this was a Fear the Walking Dead video, we'd be here for a week. Because they have a new villain every goddamn episode. Before we get started, as always, the link to my Patreon is down below where I do a whole bunch of other reactions. I do two uploads a day. I'm working through some old shows, but this week and next week, I'm also starting reactions for um, Netflix's The Sandman, Resident Evil. I'm doing Only Murders in the Building and She-Hulk. So there's a four new shows that are starting up on Patreon within the next like seven or eight days. On top of the extended versions to Tales of the Walking Dead, which I'm really liking. I think I just, it's different. It's different. Look, that's not this video. So my opinions for that show is going to be in the reaction videos. Um, but I like it. I think it's, it's trippy. Let's get into the villains. So right away, I think I might have to pick a different list because my God, this, this, this is... <laughs> This is a short fucking list. Well, we'll start with this one anyway. Okay, so the rankings that we have is we have really good, good, whatever, bad, and D. D is for dipshit. We're just going to get started and put my absolute fave up in really good. He is just, people really fucking hate him. <laughs> Understandable. I've said it so many times before. I've loved watching his growth, the changes that he's gone through, the... Fucking the one-liners that man comes out with are just truly unmatched. You just never know what that psycho is going to blurt out. I have liked watching the back and forth with Maggie. Uh, it does get a little bit repetitive sometimes. I'm like, my God, just, just choose. Are you going to kill each other or are you just going to coexist? Seems like they're picking coexist for now. With the spin-off show and everything is coming. But I don't know, villain-wise, when he came into the show, he, he's already been in the show for almost half of the show's life, which is nuts. That's just fucking insane. He entered in season 6 and we're in season 11 now. Technically it should be season 12 because we've had the bonus episodes at the end of season 10 and then this is an extended season. So my dude has been around for a long fucking time. It's weird though because when I think of him now I think of like the more up to date stuff that he's done. So like the stuff with Maggie, the stuff with Judith, the stuff with Alpha, that one scene of the two of them butt naked standing in the middle of a field or wherever it was that they were. That is just seared into my brain. But like going back, my god, his entrance, the lineup, the whistling, the fucking easy street, the saviors. I just, I really like him as a villain. I miss him as a villain. He's kind of, he's wandered into really weird waters lately where it's like he is trying to redeem himself. He's trying to do better, but he's still Negan. So that fuckery's still lurking under the surface. But just, he's, ab he's absolutely iconic. You know, you see, you see that picture, the fucking, the neck scarf and the bat and you're just like, God damn. One thing I really love about a character as well is I love it when a character can split the audience into wanting to just absolutely go feral. You have people that love him for whatever reason and then you have people that despise him. It takes a good actor to pull something like that off. Alright, uh, next. This is a very short list. What's the deal with this? We'll put Alpha up in good. Yeah, I loved... Actually, hang on, hang on. We'll put, we'll put her dude up with her as well. I liked the Whispers. I liked the Whispers storyline. I liked that arc. I thought it was trippy, creepy. And when that promo trailer came out and you could hear the whispering, my God, people lost their fucking minds. And she is interesting just because everything about her, being the leader that she was, being in the community that she was, but then, like, you know, you go back and you get to see what she was like as a mother, what she was like pre-apocalypse. And it's just... It's a lot. And I am a fucking sucker for a solid sidekick, a solid right-hand man. Which, speaking of, why isn't Simon down here? Negan's right-hand motherfucker isn't down there. But I think I preferred... Uh, I don't want to say it, but I did. I think I preferred Beta over Alpha. There was just something about him. He comes in, stabbity mac two knives. He's like seven foot tall. The fight he had with Daryl in the building was just, to this day, one of my favourite fight scenes. He was... There was just something really unnerving about him. As creepy as Alpha was, and like an evil mastermind, villain, whatever you want to call her. I just think he was better. He just really unnerved me all the time. And then my guy just, you know, carried her head around for a little bit. And the backstory for him as well, that he was that singer, he was famous before the apocalypse. That I, That's something I never really thought about when it comes to the, these shows, or this show in particular. You know, they always talk about who were you before? What were you doing before all this, before the fall, whatever? What happened to all the celebrities? What happened to all like the Kim Kardashians of the world? When the world went to shit? You don't really see anyone that was famous 
pre-apocalypse in this world. So throwing in somebody like him putting in that wild card, I just thought was different. I reckon if that did happen, they'd probably become cult leaders. They'd, they'd you know, they'd, they'd find a fan base somewhere, post a tweet and be like, apocalypse, meet up motherfuckers, come, come protect me. See, it's kind of hard to talk about like the villains or the people without talking about the era they come from as well. And like the, the point in time in the show that they were in it for. I did love the Whisper story arc. I did love all that stuff. I mean, come on, we got shit like the Pike scene out of that. We got so much shocking visuals. But still, I think I prefer the Savior storyline and all of that, as well as loving Negan as that villain. But man, whenever I say that, oh my God, I get some shit for that. People are like, people didn't like the Savior storyline or people are like, oh, it went downhill after that or blah, blah, blah. That was my absolute favorite time in the show. I don't know, it's because that's when I was like most excited for the show. That's when I was absolutely, I was like a chipmunk on crack. I was just hyped every time I started an episode of this show back then. I still do love it and I still do really enjoy what they're doing with this. But there was just something about season six and seven that just really got to me. <laughs> I'm going to put governor in whatever and that is definitely i'm gonna have people telling me i'm wrong that's something i get a lot on these videos i don't get people being like oh my god you know that's so weird i don't agree with you but i would have ranked him higher or whatever the fuck no i don't really get much of that when i do these videos i get people being like you're wrong and here's why and it's like i wish i could just find those people grab them delicately by the earlobes and shake them but you can't do that but yeah the governor and it's weird because like the prison story arc was one of my favorites. I loved the storyline from that time. I loved the setting. I loved the visuals. I fucking, lads, the prison was one of my favorite sets that The Walking Dead ever did, ever. And like Penny was so sad. And then you had the whole Andrea storyline as well. You had Herschel being killed. His death, his, the governor's death himself was just so fucking dramatic as well. But it's not one that I go back and rewatch all that often. It's not one that really sticks out to me. He's iconic, obviously. But to me, not one of my favorites. This little fucker. This little spicy motherfucker. I'm probably going to put him up on the same level as the governor. I see, I feel bad because it's titled whatever. If that was titled like indifferent or if that was titled like kind of. Can we change this actually? Oh my God, we can. Okay, I'm going to change whatever to kind of good because they're not on good level, but they're not bad. I hate being harsh when it comes to these things. I loved the Terminus storyline. Um, the whole, you know, everybody's split up, everyone's on the road, you don't know where you're going, but like, it's safe, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fucking vibes, we're gonna get there and it's gonna be the thing that was missing from our sad little lives. The cannibal storyline and all that shit that came into it was <laughs> different. And the scene in the church where Rick goes absolutely berserk as well was, loved it. Again, I don't know, I think all the villains have their own strong points, they have their own things that stick with you, for whatever reason, but I just don't think he's good level. This motherfucker. I don't, I did not, I did not care for him or them or the wolves. I just did not give a shit. You're just going up to bad. I don't know why I didn't really care for that. I, I think it was just so quick and I don't think it was handled as good as it could have been. It just kind of happened and was over and it's like, okay. And this little bitch down here is going straight in the dipshit tier. Because as much as I liked the whole hospital storyline that they're living high up they're secluded they're whatever there's corruption in the ranks because hello there's ranks there's going to be fucking corruption i just her face fills me with such unimaginable rage over the whole beth situation i do understand it was so fast it was spur of the moment it was like a reactionary thing i don't care i fucking hate that bitch that's it for this tier listing that kind of sucked can i not find another one ah oh, shit lads i'm after finding a slightly better one Okay, this is kind of a better one. There's not that many more, but there's at least three or four more that we could probably talk about. These pop-up ads are really making me want to absolutely smack someone really hard with a sheet of ice. Get fucked. Go away. Oh man, am I going to be able to remember where I put the other ones? Okay, okay. Hang on, they've thrown me off because the lettering is different as well. Are you really that easy to fucking throw off? Yeah, yeah, I am. Ah, uh, governor. Where's wolf boy? There you're at. There you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Garrett was, like, down here, right? Okay, so it's not that much of a better list. There's only four extras, but look. When you're playing Guess Who, doesn't it make it more of a challenge to have, like, six options instead of three? 
Joe and the claimed group. I'm going to put them up in B. Maybe even A. I just, I fucking loved that. I loved, I've said it before about Daryl. That poor son of a bitch always like just so happens to every now and again find himself accidentally joining a new group or a new cult or being initiated in somewhere. He's a beautiful bastard, so like I understand. But I think this was kind of one of the first examples of seeing a group that Daryl probably should have fit in with. You think of Daryl just like pre-apocalypse or whatever. Um, all he ever used to do is follow Marl around. He would have kind of stuck to his teachings and his ideas. So you'd see a group like this, you'd think that Daryl would just go straight to survival and be like, well, if I go with them, you know, I'll have food, I'll have shelter, I'll be safe, whatever. But man, they were bad motherfuckers. I just, yeah, I really did. I really did love everything that came with them. Um, the scene actually by the car at night time. Was that the claimed group? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, the scene by the car where um, all that shit near, very nearly went down between that group and I know Rick was there, but it wasn't really going to go down with Rick. It was uh, Michonne and Carl that were both threatened directly. That just, that shit is scary. That shit is scarier to me than somebody, okay, do you know what? We'll put you up there, actually. That shit is scarier to me than the idea of somebody that like skins zombies and wears their faces. I mean, as twisted as Alpha was, and she is, the idea of a group like this is so much more terrifying, particularly like as a woman, because that shit is just, people like that exist in the world as it is. People that rape and murder and do whatever they want to do. So an apocalypse would just heighten that, and all those little psychopaths would find each other and group together, and that thought just, whoa. Also, it was around the time of the claimed group that we got the You're My Brother scene. So, again, talk about eras that are connected with the villains or the bad guys or the antagonists, whatever you want to call them. I miss Rick so fucking much. This little bastard. I'm just going to put you in D. D, this time, just stands for simply don't care. He kind of annoys me. He's a little bit irritating. What they tried to do with the new group. Um, man, was it him? Actually, no, I'll put him down there because I actually dislike him a lot more. Him, was he the guy that wanted to like go and get the drugs out of the house or some shit? He was a spoiled little brat that simply did not give a fuck about anybody because little bitch boy has lived within the walls pretty much, you know, for most of his life. Mummy runs the community and he's like, I want, I want my drugs and I want them now. People like this or the picnic situation. I, there's very little I dislike more than a spoiled little motherfucker and he just encapsulated all of us. But again, you still would have people like that in the apocalypse. People that come from money or that are like f family members of people who are in government or whatever the fuck who will be shuttled off to safety. Those little whiny babies are the ones who probably will survive to a certain extent until life comes back around and bites them in the ass. Lance is just, he reminds me of that like really snotty, slimy, car salesman that has that psychopathic smile always on and you just know their shit their shit lurking beneath that surface he's a different kind of villain he's not like balls to the wall looks like they could like you know eat your babies kind of villain but they're also not really the looks kind of unhinged but you could probably kill them in a heartbeat he just there's a different vibe to him and i appreciate it i like that vibe it is unnerving Sebastian I don't know man even just seeing his face still fills me with rage even seeing him on the list I'm like you little I look at his face all I can hear is you just disrupted our days should have fucking impaled him with an umbrella pole that's all I'm gonna say and my guy okay I'm gonna put him up here right I'm gonna keep him in the middle for now while we discuss him a little bit first viewing did not like Shane hated him you know, second, third, fourth, fifth viewing, I was still like, yeah, whatever. It's only when you get up to really recent for me. My opinion for me. Jesus Christ, put down the pitchforks. It was only in more recent times of watching Rick and watching the group, and even watching, like, myself root and go more savage and go more vicious and violent when cheering on the survivors that I still stick with, that I still love, that I'm like, yeah, like, they should... <laughs> I revert to two seconds ago. The stabbing with the umbrella suggestion. When you've lived through the apocalypse, I, I say from experience. Like when you've lived through it and you've watched the survivors and you've watched everything they go through, you would root for them to do anything and everything that they fucking want to do to keep them and their families safe. Or at least I would. Shane, my guy, my, my little, my little, uh, 
I'm gonna shag your wife person. He just got there much quicker. He reached that point in like season one. He was like, I am fucking ready. He was kind of built for this. Thing that worries me about that is if he had lived, if he had survived, because he had reached that point so much faster than everybody else, how long would it have been before he went crazy or before somebody else killed him off anyway? Or before the paranoia made him go absolutely fucking nuts? He skipped like nine seasons of character development to get to the same point that Rick later reached anyway. Well, actually, you could argue Rick kind of went there with the sleeping saviors. That's when Rick got there. To that kind of mindset. Ricky Dicky had many instances of like, questionable like I love you, but why did you do that kind of moments. I don't know man, Shane was just fucking built different. And since like I first watched the show, which was I don't know how long ago, I, I want to say I first saw the show in like 2015. Since then, I have also watched The Punisher and let me just say, Mr. Bernthal is just fine as fucking hell. So I don't know, going back and rewatching his story arc and what happened, I'm like, I, apart from the whole fucking your best friend's wife, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm dead set no against cheating. But like, he really did just skip like years ahead of everybody and just went straight into, okay, we gotta do what we gotta do now. Fine. <laughs> Actually, I'll bump him right up here because the drama that man brought with him was unlike, it was just unlike everything. He really committed to the bit. He was like, I am going to make myself the most controversial and messy motherfucker. And he, he went for it. So that's this version of the list. Not a whole lot different. We were in our days. Okay, I found another one. This one looks like it's a little bit more promising. Ah, shit, but there's already so many people that I've already put on the list. We're going to speed run. I do like the titling of these more. So you crazy crazy. Wow, you served a purpose. What else you got? And you did this for what? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll put him there. I think I have fucked up already. Oopsie daisy. That's the kind of day I'm having. It's Friday. I'm onto my third fucking tier list of the day and I'm saying shit like oopsie daisy. Okay, I think that's roughly how it was. I and mean, I've done this list twice already. You'd think I'd remember. We will just speed run this one. I feel like, yeah. I feel like, yeah. Complicated, but maybe there, or... Although, no, she really did enrage me. She really fucking did enrage me so big that, and I lay with him after, I felt every bone in my body just ache to lurch through the screen and grab her by them miniature bangs, you know? And she's had, she's had an interesting time as well, because then she's, she hopped on over to uh, World Beyond. And because of doing that, she's probably going to have a role in the Rick and Michonne show. So she she's smart. She's a smart villain. She got in, enraged everyone, fucked shit up a little bit, lost her community, lost everything, gained Father Gabriel, and then fucking left. She didn't die or get, you know, a, a secure ending. She left and bounced to another show. She secured the bag for future roles. I appreciate that. Dwighty boy. See, it's weird. I don't know where to put him because I don't want to rank him. He's not crazy crazy. Actually, well, if we're going by this ranking, then she probably has to be up there. So you're crazy crazy. And he eats people. So I feel like he should probably go up there too. But Dwight, I don't know. He was like, he was very much a character that was just in a situation that he had to make the best of a bad deal. He had his wife tangled up with the Negan situation. He himself was tangled up. He was doing what he had to do to survive. Did I fucking hate him and cheer and actively hope that he'd be killed in the beginning? Yes, I did. But I love him now. After watching his progression and fear and watching how much he's changed and everything he's done. I do. I love him. But watching somebody be so like manipulated and under somebody's thumb as he was with Negan and then seeing how completely different they were, even though they were in the same group together, showed how in times like that you really just gotta cling. When the ship's going down, you gotta cling to the nearest, strongest swimmer that you can. But I really fucking liked him. And the, and the progression he's had on fear has been absolutely insane. And in The Walking Dead, I feel like he did. He got put into one box and he kind of got stuck there a little bit. And my opinion didn't really completely change with him until I got to see what he's done in fear. I loved him. I loved his time on the show. I love that he did get the chance to explore other things and further his storyline without it being messy or muddled or 
mixed in or slid in with other things which it would have been in The Walking Dead if he'd stayed in The Walking Dead. So I think, like, you know, he got his chance to shine. I still don't forgive him for shooting my boy. This little motherfucker, Simon. He was just... I think I'm gonna put him in... Oh, so you crazy, crazy. I didn't particularly love him as, like, a villain. He was just, like, the right-hand man that got a bit too comfortable in his role and went a little bit berserk. But there was an element of crazy there to him. I don't think he was the best villain or the best antagonist in any means, but there was just something about him that really was truly unhinged. And then with how he died as well and then ending up on the wall. Did you hear that? It was a loud ass alarm that I'd never heard before. My house is making sounds I've never heard. But even when he was on the wall as the walker, he still had that crazy look in his eye. He still had that Simon vibe to him. So I just got up the, um, the Wikipedia on his character to try and just bring up other points on him. And my god, they did not need to come for that man's neck like this. So it was actor, Stephen Ogg, gender, male, hair, black, but in brackets, graying, balding. You did not need to come for my man's throat like that. Yeah, there's a point here where it says that he's considered even by Negan to be too violent and too psychotic. When Negan says that you are too much of anything, you know you're doing the absolute most. And above and beyond the most line. So I think that is the third and final list. We've, we've, we, we, it's been varied. This list really does just do something. You've seen all them faces together. Just... So many feelings. And they're not good. So yeah, you guys, that is it for this ranking, this week's tier list. Um, that was fun. That was kind of rageful, but that was fun. As always, be sure to leave your thoughts below what you thought. What would you change? What would you do differently? Whereas, would, is there anyone that wasn't on these lists? Of course there is, because these lists were ridiculously short. That's why I don't do these tier lists as often as I want to, because they're few and far between. Like, with the subject matter, it's all the same shit. It's just like, oh, Walking Dead characters uh, and Walking Dead seasons. Those are the two you see most often on the tier list website, and it's like, oh my god, will somebody please vary this and make some different ones, please? But I know that those lists were all quite short. Um, given the fact we had to go through three of them. So if there's other people that were left out or forgotten, make sure you bring them up. Um, I'll go through, have a read. Yeah, like I said in the beginning, the link to my Patreon is down below where there's a whole bunch of shows going on. The extended version of uh, Tales of the Walking Dead is also going to be going up over there. Link to my Twitter and my Instagram is also down below if you want to say hi or connect somewhere that isn't here. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you all soon.